So you're going to be taking a look at using the Vt Ruby gem to add Vt into a Rails application. This will then allow us to use Vue in our Rails app along with hot reloading, and it's a pretty smooth experience overall. So this is an alternative to using something like ES Build, and it's it's actually pretty simple to set up. So the actual gem file here, or the actual GitHub README, just kind of wants you to add the gem to your gem file. So we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. I'll hit F11, I'll type bundle add, and then I'll add the Vite Rails gem. Okay, we have the Vite Rails gem added. Now all we have to do is run the bundle exec Vite install command. So we'll just go ahead and paste that in and this will go through the uh, generation for us. So this is if you already have an existing Rails app and you're trying to add this into it. Now this is gonna change how your Rails app works a bit. So that is something to be aware of, of course, because we're not gonna be using import maps. We're gonna be using uh, Vite instead of like ES build even. So that is a thing to keep in mind. Uh, what I wanna do now is in our Explorer, I wanna take a look at the Vite config because this is where we're gonna be adding our uh, reload and our view. So to actually get the reloading in the view, we do need to install two Vite plugins. So to do this, we're gonna type npm i, and then we need to grab the vite-plugin-full-reload. We'll type space. And then after that, we want to also get the at vite.js slash plugin-view. These two will, this one will give you the uh, hot reloading when you make a change to a file. And this one will give you the ability to use view with your Vite installation. Once this is done, the last thing we wanna do is run a Rails G controller pages home to generate a home page, And then we can go ahead and type Rails S to start our server. At this point, you're pretty much good to go in terms of installing things. So what we wanna check now is on the uh, root of the application, it tells us to look for a uh, notification that has Vite Ruby console logged. That's not gonna happen unless you're actually on a specific page in your application. So if I leave this and go to the uh, pages homepage, here you'll see that Vite Rails is being console logged, but we're also getting an import map error. So we do need to go clean up our uh, application.html.erb file real quick. So inside of our app views layouts application.html.erb file, we'll have this, uh, where is it? The JavaScript import map tags. If we get rid of this and then we can just go ahead and refresh, we should now have the Vite Rails working as expected. So we no longer get that error. The other thing we need to do is we need to open up a terminal here or open up another console window. I'm opening the terminal here with control shift tilde, which is the key right below the escape and next to the one and above the tab on the left side of your keyboard. In here, what we wanna do is run a bin slash vite command. And then we want to also pass in the dev argument. So this will run our actual vite server. And now with this vite server, if we set up the hot reloading properly, every time we make a change, this will refresh on uh, in like a 200 millisecond delay is what I think we're gonna set this up uh, with. So you could also run this with Foreman, of course, if you were to set that up in your proc file. But in this case, we're gonna act as if you're not using Foreman because I don't wanna tell you how to live your life. So I'm gonna close the application.html.erb file and then we'll focus on the Vite config real quick. So there's two things to add here. One is gonna be our import for the full reload from vite-plugin-full-reload. That'll give us our hot reloading. The other thing we wanna add is view from our at vite.js slash plugin-view. So the view that we're importing is gonna be lowercase. Just keep that in mind, I've made that mistake before. Now we need to create two different plugins. One is gonna be for full reload and one is gonna be for the lowercase view. We don't need to do anything with this view, but for the full reload, we need to tell it uh, where we need to look for files that change that need to cause a reload, and we need to tell it what the delay is. So the files we look for are in this array, and the delay are in these braces. So the files, we're just gonna tell it if we change a config slash routes.rb, we'd like you to do a reload. And also if you could check the app slash views uh, directory and then all of the subdirectories in it that have a file in it. And then we want to just say this should have a delay of 200 milliseconds. If we save this now, and I think we need to stop and start the server again, we should then be good to go. 
And if we now come into one of our files, so maybe our pages and our home page, and we make a span here that says test, and then we close the span, I'll hit Control S, and you can see it immediately reloads the page for us. So that's a really nice quality of life improvement. But now let's go ahead and let's add in the view stuff. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a content tag. This is gonna be pretty much just a div, except instead of using a regular HTML div, we're gonna use the Rails equivalent. So we'll create a div. We won't pass anything in. This is just the word that goes in the div. So we'll pass in the empty string and we'll give this an ID and we'll set it equal to app because view is gonna be set up the same way React was where we need a core ID or a core div with an ID that we can attach our view application to. Now, if we come into app, JavaScript, entry points, application.js. In here, it's gonna to explain to us how we can use all of the core Rails functionality with Vite. So this is all pretty heavily commented. It tells you exactly what you need to do. If you wanna use Turbo, you just uncomment these two lines. Active storage is these two lines. I actually wish this was covered in like a core Rails app that had Hotwire and, and Stimulus in it uh, because this is something I've had to Google a couple times. And then it even has the uh, glob syntax for you to use the uh, action cable channels and how to import from your CSS uh, directory inside of app front end CSS file. So we're not gonna use any of that. Instead, what we're gonna do is just create a bare bones view application. To do this, of course, we need to create the view app. So we're gonna import create app from view. We then need to import a component. In this case, we're just gonna create a directory called components and inside of it, we'll create a app.view component. So let's go ahead and let's create that real quick. In our explorer, our JavaScript, we'll right click new folder, call this components. Inside of the components folder, right click new file app.view. Now, if you come down to your extensions and you search for the view snippets extension, I believe, which is right here, the view three snippets, you'll then be able to create a view app by just typing view init or just view in, hit enter, and this will create a template for you. I can then come in here, create a h1 and just say uh, view, and then we are pretty much good to go in here. So we'll come back to our application.js, and the last thing we need to do is create the view app. For this, we're gonna say const app is equal to create app. We pass in this app component, which is just our core component that we're going to create all the other components from. And then we call dot mount and we pass in the div with an ID of app that we created in our home page. And you can see right away we get our view components showing up on the screen. So let's get rid of this H1 and this P tag. Refresh. Or I guess we don't even need to refresh. We just need to save. And now we're good to go. I'm going to close the application.js, the home.html.erb and the Vite config. And now let's just create a basic uh, little counter app to sort of show you how to use nested components here. First, we'll have to create the counter. So we'll just throw that in right there. I'll hit Control S and it'll tell us that it can't find this component. Next, we have to import it. And because we're already inside of the components directory in, in this app.view component, we can just do this import relative to where we are and just import counter from dot slash counter dot view. Last thing we have to do is in the export default, we have to grab the uh, counter component and put it inside of this components block. We can go ahead and save this and it'll tell us this component doesn't exist. So let's come into our components, right click new file, counter.view, hit enter. And in here we'll type view init again, we'll hit enter, control S, and now we can try to refresh and we won't see an error again. So this is one of those instances where you do need to actually manually refresh to make things work. But let's go ahead and let's add in a button and some text. To create a button, we'll, up here in the template, we'll just say this is a button with a at click. The click will call a function, which we'll just call increment. And let's change this from a plus to just the word increment. Below the increment button, let's create a P tag. And then for this P tag, we'll just say the count is, and then inside of the, what they call the mustaches, what I call a mistake, we'll just do a counter variable, I guess. So now you can see the button appears, the count appears, but the counter variable doesn't because it's not initialized yet. Inside of our export default, we wanna create some data. And inside of this data, we want to return something inside of braces. And inside of that, we can just return zero. And you can see here, if we change this to 10, that is initializing our counter. 
So that's pretty neat. We'll leave it at zero and then we'll come below the data and we'll just create a methods block. This will have our increment method inside of it, which just sets this dot count to be equal to count plus one. We can save that. Now, if we click this button, you should be able to see that the counter is increasing with each click. But okay, let's say we wanna change this to be a different style of button. Because we have these inline CSSs, it's actually pretty simple. The first thing we have to do is in our button here is just give this an ID. We'll set the ID equal to, I don't know, counter dash button. And then we'll just go ahead and copy this. We can come down to our styles. We'll just do a little hash counter dash button braces. We'll hit enter. And then I'll just let GitHub Copilot create a button for us. This will give us something. Hopefully I'll come over here and refresh. Uh, and it might be because the style lang needs to be CSS. Yeah, so this language right here does need to be CSS to make this work, it seems. So let's give this a border radius, maybe, of, let's say, five pixels. That looks good. And of course, you can change this as you'd like to whatever you want it to look like. I'm just going with something pretty basic here. The other thing I want to do is give this a on hover. So I'll give this a counter dash button hover. It will change the color to something a little bit darker. And I also want to change the cursor to be the pointer cursor. So I'll save that, come in here. And now if I hover over this, it changes to a pointer and it gets a little bit darker. And now you can see we have a working view counter here in a component like that. But yeah, overall, I think this is pretty interesting. Uh, let me know down below if there's something else you'd like to see done with V to view, uh, because I know that we are pretty starved for content with this inside of Rails or even just in general. Uh, so feel free to leave requests down below and I'll try to get to them as uh, they sort of come up. But yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.